individuals are being evacuated. Uh, welcome to the Minnesota Department of Public Safety. The mission of Division of Homeland Security Emergency Management is to help Minnesota, and by that I mean local government primarily, cities and counties, prepare for, prevent, respond to, and recover from human and other natural caused disasters. A facility that we call the State Emergency Operations Center, which essentially is where representatives of state agencies, parts of state government that have um, things to offer local government and assistance where they gather in one place so that we can coordinate that support to the local to the local communities. How can we support that incident commander who is dealing with that? What things do he or she need? We're going to have a drill and we're going to activate the state emergency operations center. We're going to bring our staff in and what we're going to do is we're going to work through the process of there's an event happening in the city of Duluth. So we really need to get our staff on board with what's planning, logistics, and operations. I'll give you a brief overview of the scenario and then we'll go out and uh, have our staff work through the problems that we can come up with a scenario. What we're going to work on in the scenario is we're looking at the city of Duluth. And the city of Duluth now has a couple days of rain, so they have highly saturated soil. Much like what we had in uh, 2012, where we had some mudslides, we had the zoo issue, we had all that flooding up in Duluth. So we're looking at that part of the scenario along with a train derailment that has oil and other hazardous materials down in the, the yard. So we need to figure out what the weather is coming in for the next couple of days. We get to figure out what kind of logistics support they do if they have to evacuate. Do we need National Guard? Do we need uh, mass care and sheltering with the Red Cross? What are those pieces we need? We need to figure out who what EOCs are open. We also get to get a hold of the Coast Guard and the state of Wisconsin. We do a lot of collecting, analyzing, and disseminating information. As you can imagine in a scenario like this, there's a lot going on. And we're trying to make sense out of what's happening in Northeast Minnesota right now. What's happened? What was on that train? How have they responded? What help might they need? in order to deal with the incident and keep the good people of the city of Duluth and the surrounding area safe. Well, the first thing we need is a map of the Duluth area. We need to look at the weather um, forecast for the next couple of days. We need to do some plume projections on the, the chemical release with the train derailment. We need to start the incident action plan with the state agencies. We also need to develop a state, a state staffing plan um, for the operational periods. Kevin, if you'd like to uh, do the plume projections. It's uh, chlorine and, and ammonia in the release, on. right? Correct. All right. And Rob and Mickey, if you could work on getting a map of the Duluth area, right. as well as the weather yep. forecast for the next two days. I'll start working on the staffing plan. That would be great. Thank you. Gary? I'll work on the critical infrastructure and getting everything identified All right. the spill. And Jennifer, if you could work on the incident action plan. We'll be briefing the SIM in an hour, so if I can have those updates as quickly as you can get them, it would be appreciated. As important as anything that we do out of the State Emergency Operations Center is we help communicate with the public. We, we need to tell people in Minnesota what's happened, what are we doing, what do we need you to do or not do, and what are we going to do next. So we try to provide that platform through a joint information center to speak with one voice. Good morning, this is a drill. Um, we're going to talk about the situation in Duluth here. I have three speakers for you. The first is Joe Kelly. He's the Director of Homeland Security and Emergency Management for the state of Minnesota. The staffing, the people that show up to fill that room up are representatives from about 25 different state agencies. Depending on the incident, the federal government will show up. And then we have some very important partners, those voluntary organizations. So Carla, if you could get a hold of St. Louis County and see what their situation is. Um, Randy, if you could start jotting down some uh, some notes of things we need to accomplish. And then Brian, if you could get a hold of the city of Duluth and uh, see what their situation is. I'm just wondering if you have an update on any roads that are closed in the Duluth area. And could you see if their uh, EOC has been activated at this point? Okay. Is it fully staffed yes, then, Carla? Yes, they are fully staffed. Okay. Thank you. That was as of 10.20 a.m. So it's nearing the Wisconsin border as well, so we're going to have to see what the Coast Guard response is and then any other any other activations that have happened possibly in Carleton County okay. or elsewhere in St. Louis County. Okay. This humble little facility, when the telephone rings and, and uh, the incident commander or the sheriff or the mayor of uh, Duluth, because he's the city of the first class, 
calls here and says, we need some help. It could be everything from we need cots and blankets because we're establishing a shelter for people who have evacuated from the area, to we need some technical assistance on the disposal of debris and other hazardous materials so we don't, we don't contaminate the environment, to the Department of Health saying, hey, how do we know if the drinking water is still safe to drink? So what we're looking at logistically is possible mass evacuation in the area. So start thinking about those resources that counties are going to need help with and then mass sheltering possibilities, and again, possible um, resources for that. Then the next thing is the um, EOC is gonna be going 24 seven. So we need to look at our logistics here in the facility. So that's getting the plan, activated the meal plan. So we can get meals, get everybody drinks and stuff like that here. And let's look, start looking at some of our private sector resources up in the Duluth area for um, possible, you know, the flooding issues, the um, sandbagging. And then um, we can also work with MnDOT on um, possible slope failures and any road issues up there. First priority is to protect lives. Make sure that, that, we, that nobody gets killed. If people have been hurt or injured, we take care of those folks. Priority one is taking care of people's lives. Two is stabilize the incident. Whatever it is, we don't want it to get any worse. In today's scenario, there's been a train derailment in a rail yard in Duluth. We would really like to keep it there if we can. So to stabilize the incident. Third is preserving property and environment. And fourth, even at the beginning stages of an incident is how are we going to recover from this? How are we going to get the city, the county back to normal as soon as this thing, as soon as this thing passes? A one mile radius of the derailment. And those roads are I-35,